This conference will now be recorded. Okay, well, uh, good morning and welcome to the Planning and Zoning Liaison Committee special meeting. Uh, today's Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Uh, first on the agenda is uh, uh, a, a possible action on the minutes from September 29th, 2021. So I'd like uh, a motion to approve those minutes. No moves. I'll second it. Okay. Any further discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The motion passes. So uh, today we're here to uh, really discuss the uh, proposed data center text amendments that's going before the Planning and Zoning Committee on Monday. Uh, what is that? January 10th. Um, so, Tim, I'm going to turn this over to you uh, and let you um, talk, and then we can have some discussion after that. All right, very good. So, uh, just in terms of background, as we all know, this uh, text amendment has been discussed for many months. Um, it has uh, seen a number of iterations, changes after public hearings, etc. So, um, uh, I think what's what's come out of this is a it's a good process. You know, the the uh, town planner has you know initially put forth the language to allow data centers in our I-5 and I-X zones. Uh, then went out and spoke to the public. Public shared their their uh, their you know opinions. In some cases, concerns, and documents have been amended to reflect that. And um, uh, so the town planner and town engineer actually have been working quite closely together on this document. So now it is at a, a point where it will be going for public hearing um, on Monday the 10th, as Hank has mentioned, and, and, uh, and a potential uh, vote. Um, so we have sent out um, two versions of it. You've got the straight, uh, just you know, black line version, and you also have a red line version that has showed some of the changes that were made. And I thought it would be a good idea if we just got together um, I know we've had some conversations over time in passing, but uh, just, to, just to formalize this committee's position on the document, just to take and review it. Uh, observations, concerns, questions, um, and uh, take it from there. So uh, I'm assuming that you all have the document in front of you and uh, so we can go through it. Okay, uh, Joe. Jim, any uh, questions you have on the uh, rev revisions? I don't have any questions on it. I think, uh, again, with all the work that's been gone into this, uh, you've come up, uh, the town has come up with a good document and it's uh, fair and balanced as far as I'm concerned. And the good thing about this, it's it, in my mind, it makes clear that all this document is doing is modernizing our zoning regulations to add a new category it has nothing to do with a specific project which i think is important for everyone to know and understand i think the observations that uh, and i agree with i agree with joe so um um the observations that i had um i think i'm referring to uh, item number five so in section yeah. 4.9.C.5, five, it says data centers with accessory electrical substations. I like that statement because that addresses scale. You know, we, we have tried to make it a point that, um, for example, we have a couple of small data centers in the, in the parks now that um, no one even knows they're there because they're small and you know they don't have any impact in terms of you know noise, infrastructure, et cetera. Uh, we certainly went in, in trying to write a regulation, don't want to write it in the direction of, you know, uh, very large projects and indirectly eliminate opportunities for smaller data center projects. In many cases, independent, you know, companies, Connecticut Hospital Association being a perfect example. So by saying that um, the, you know, some of these, these um, uh, some of the language is specific to data centers with accessory electrical substations, um, that, that basically the only people that are going to have an accessory electrical substation are very, very large projects. 
Otherwise, everybody else will be getting their power off the grid, right? So I think I like that. I think that it kind of nice and delicately makes that separation. Under under 5A, submission of a sound and vibration impact analysis, which is defined above, um, I will openly say that I really don't have any um, uh, idea how to evaluate that sound level. Um, I frankly question whether the specifics to that degree of sound analysis need to be in the regulation. Um, I would think that what we've supported all along is that uh, data centers are allowable via special permit, which means that the commission has, PNZ has uh, the ability to evaluate every application independently on its merit. So if you get, um, so then I say, so why are we being so specific with the sound regulation in the regulation when you have the ability to apply that uh, when you're uh, you know, kind of evaluating a special permit? An example would be, you know, if, if a data center is um, uh, in, in closer proximity to a residential neighborhood versus one that may be, again, Let's let's say that the Edible Arrangements Building you know, wants to become a data center. Why would you hold them to the same sound regulations and sound standards when there's no residential, uh, you know, around that at all, as you would if something was out bordering, you know, North Farms and Tankwood Road? So I just, and that's that's a, that's a question and observation that I will I will bring um, forth and try to get a better understanding of. But that that would be my my question is. Again, why do we need to be so specific if, in fact, uh, we are uh, looking to approve this by special permit? Which, at that point, the specifics, I think, are much more pertinent. So, Tim, um, I, I appreciate those comments. Uh, in reading this, though, I read this as only applying to data centers that have electrical substations, which, in turn, really kind of means larger uh, data centers. So. Um, I, am, I, I think it's very dangerous to put uh, something that specific in a, um, in a regulation, specifically when you have the ability under special permit to, to do that. So I don't like the way it's set up here, um, even if it is um, specified for uh, larger um, under the auspices of uh, requiring electrical substations, I still think it's a dangerous um, move there uh, because um, if you had, uh, if you had, let's say you had edible arrangements that needed a substation, um, now you're being held to those because uh, uh, it's in the regulation under that specific section. So um, I, I appreciate what everyone's trying to do there. Um, but again, as you pointed out, uh, uh, this is all under special permit uh, that can be, you know, these can be utilized uh, as guidelines um, when planning and zoning gets a application or special permit. But um, I think it is dangerous to get that granular. Yeah, I, I think we're on the same page here. Probably a better example than edible arrangements would be, you know, go up, um, uh, go up to holochrome, okay? So holochrome up in Barnes Park North is is really tucked into the northwest corner of the park, all right? Uh, there's no residential even close to it. If holochrome for some reason, you know, uh, if, that, if that facility was ever turned into a data center, you know, why would we hold them to the same sound standard as if something is, again, much closer to residential? So, um, and Jim and Joe, if you're comfortable with that, then I will just, raise that as a, as a question and try to get clarity uh, from our town planner and town engineer. We are actually having an internal meeting uh, on Friday of this week, just to review a couple of things before Monday's meeting. So if it loses the yeah. committee, yeah. get up. I have an additional question. What constitutes a substation? It's, gonna, it's really the amount of power that they'll need. So Connecticut Hospital Association, for example, we can bring the power that they need in their smaller data center over, you know, traditional electric lines. 
where a substation simply means that you know we can't we can't carry the power to a um, to a large data center over telephone poles and so forth. It, they need to, a substation needs to be uh, built in order to take and, and um, I don't know the I don't know the electrical jargon, but the substation is here is a you know to accumulate and boost more power. So it's it's it's, it's power driven, which okay. is suggested as size driven. So uh, would an outside generator qualify as a substation? No. no. So there's, there's separate language in here regarding outside generators and noise. Okay. Thank you. Jim, uh, at, at our uh, regular meeting, Jim had uh, noted that uh, when he did a Google search that there were over 30 data centers in Wallingford already, um, recognizing that depending on how it's uh, coded in Google and stuff, uh, you know, I, I, the accuracy of that uh, is in question, but uh, it is fair to say that there's probably more uh, that exists than we are aware of. Are, are you familiar with any of those data centers that do have a substation already that this regulation, um, obviously, would it would be grandfathered, but that this regulation would now uh, affect? A great question, and the answer is no. All the I, I, I too was was kind of surprised to hear 30 data centers because I, I couldn't begin to identify half of them uh, if in fact it's accurate. But yeah, you know, we've got a couple of data centers on North Plains Industrial Road, all just taking you know their power off the wall. Okay. So uh, thank you. And I'm not saying that there's not some electrical apparatus within the building that you know gives them no. whatever, but no 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 substations that are dedicated to specific buildings. Okay, thank you. And getting back to your original question about the uh, section A, uh, your concern, I, I I agree with you. Uh, even if they can clarify by uh, injecting the substation statement within that, if that makes them more comfortable for some reason if they feel that they need that clause uh i think it needs to be clarified because like you said we can't have we can't discourage business from coming to town and and that's that's what something like that would do to a small business reading our regs uh they wouldn't pick up the phone to, to inquire what does that mean they'd move on to to the next town and our, our unfortunately our tax base and our residents will be affected by it. I think it's an unfair burden to the taxpayers of the town to shy away from profitable businesses because of misunderstanding of the regulations. All right, so I'll, I'll bring that point uh, to question regarding the, uh, the, you know, the need to be um, so granular in the regulation. I think when granular is applicable, and I think we'll agree, is when you're addressing a particular application, and then we want to make sure that we protect the interests of, um, you know, abutting neighbors, uh, residential, etc. And we've supported that all along. It's just our question is whether this level of granularity really belongs in the regulation, right? Agreed. All right, I will bring that forward. The other, the other thing, uh, Hank, that I, I had question with is you know when um, when they you know, when data when the Godspace showed up with the huge data center concept their their initial concepts had the data centers you know setbacks from the streets at 100 feet and we completely balked at that and said you know there's no way we need to get way back off the road so the number was 350 feet back off the road you can see the language in here includes earth berms, vegetative buffers, all things that we supported to make sure that we can, A, uh, impede any type of, uh, you know, visual. Uh, I mean, these are not ugly buildings, by the way, but, you know, if people don't want to look out at them. I understand that. So we, we've put the earth berms in. We, we've supported that rather. We've supported the vegetative buffers. So the, there's no visual impairment for the building. And then we said, let's go back 350 feet. And now I'm on, um, let's see, section E, where it says that the um, analysis is, is no, no less than 500 feet. Yeah. So I, I really wanted to talk about that because um, 
350 feet was something that came from a sound expert. It's not something we made up. And why did the three, uh, 350 all of a sudden become five? I'm not quite sure, but uh, we can inquire about that. Okay. Thank you. And of course, what you've got in front of you is, is um, you know, the changes, the proposed amendment to the IX and I-5. The language is uh, obviously very similar. Um, so I, you know, same, same, those are really the only two issues I have, but I think everything else is good. I think it reflects our interest in the, uh, the category of trying to attract data centers and at the same time uh, addresses the concerns of, uh, you know, uh, not only industrial neighbors, but uh, you know, potential residential neighbors. Any other comments on the documents themselves? Well, I'd just like to say for all the people that were involved in this change and for how long it's taken, I, I think we have a, a, a good proposal to go before PNC next week. Uh, there's a lot of input. Um, is it going to be perfect? Probably not. Um, but I, I think we're as close as we can get reasonably um and and it's time to move forward so mr chairman you want to talk about um just maybe a couple of talking points that uh may come from the commissioners on monday night uh yes thank you uh i i know that we had some very good discussion at the meeting uh, on monday um and all of it uh talking about the modernization of um, our our tax base uh, and and making sure that um, we continue to um, uh, not be dependent on uh, one particular sector. Uh, I think you, your uh, comments in the past, Tim, about uh, when our largest taxpayer uh, moved out of town, that uh, because of the diversity that we have in the tax base, that it really uh, was, un we were unaffected by that. And I think that that just uh, should be, again, uh, uh, just drawn to people's attention that that, uh, that these uh, zoning regulations were written in such a time that uh, data centers weren't really uh, uh, thought about at that point and uh, adding them in there uh, certainly uh, is appropriate at this time. I also think that that is in direct uh, alignment with the, um, I'm, I'm going to get the acronym wrong, Tim, uh, the PU. POCD. POCD, the, um, the long-term uh, strategic plan there uh, and stuff. So um, I just want, you know, want to make sure that we point that out as well. I would agree. Yeah. So the you know, plan of conservation and development specifically talks about um, um, are that we should be focusing on modernizing our grand list. And that's what data centers will do. It modernizes the grand list. And it's to your point, Hank, you know, you've, you know, we, we, have, we have been the beneficiary of a, of a diversified grand list. Our uh, former uh, controller used to say that all the time, Jim Bowes. Wallingford's one of their, one of our biggest strengths is the diversification within our grand list from manufacturing you know, and it's, it's within manufacturing. You've heard me say we've got metals, we've got plastics, we've got chemical manufacturing, we've got um, additive manufacturing, we, we've got we've got in, in warehousing, we've got first mile, we've got last mile, we've got traditional warehousing. So I mean, all of those different things. You know, in manufacturing, we have some very traditional manufacturing facilities, and if traditional the types of facilities, you know, of larger manufacturing bases that are not moving into Connecticut anymore. At some point, if some of those decide that, hey, it's time for us to leave Connecticut, we, we want to make sure that we have some diversification in that in that grand list to support it. And data centers does that. There's nothing at this point that appears to be more sustainable and more modern than supporting data centers as a, uh, uh, you know, as a, uh, a taxable user. So, and they generate even though the mega data centers are, so that I guess if we we're gonna go point by point, I mean, that would be my first thing. We have a plan of conservation and development 
that is a strategic plan that was put forth by the town. It was adopted by the Planning and Zoning Commission. It was then adopted by the town council to give us direction. The EDC is working in that direction. We are following the, the, uh, the suggestions and the recommendations in the strategic plan to modernize our grand list, and data centers does that. That's, uh, I think that's a significant you know, component. So yes, we're following the POCD, and in addition, we are diversifying um, the strength of our grand list, which is you know, very important. And I guess one point that I keep trying to drive home because I think that's where the biggest feedback comes from is that this is just adding a new category to our to our regulations. It has nothing to do with the major proposal that was once uh, that's in effect in the town. That's under separate uh, scrutiny and it's going to be discussed, uh, I, I would assume, in detail uh, under special permit. So. Again, I think that's the biggest concern I have is that too many people are confusing this with the data center the proposal that was originating uh, the conversation, and it's not. It's just opening this up to another category, as I said earlier, in the town to help keep, as you mentioned now, our, our tax base diversified. And I think that's a point that's got to be made very clear because I think many of the people that come to the meetings are not familiar with that that aspect of it. I think they they come to the meetings with the wrong uh, uh, interpretation of what we're doing with this regulation. We're just adding a category. That's it. So, Tim, you had uh, you had said that you had some uh, uh, talking points already, kind of uh, floating around there, or something. Is that something you could share with? with us before uh, Monday? Yeah, there's a, I think there's a letter or two that I had written over time um, that uh, I'll make it a point to send out. It, it talks about the things that we're talking about right now. You know, okay. Why data centers? Okay. You know, why, are, why are data centers? Um, and this was when we were in support of the municipal host agreement. That was obviously a specific applicant, but we, we went into the why data center. Um, and. Uh, so in essence, it's the, the you know the POCD. It's a diversification of the grant list. It's a strong economic impact, positive impact. Uh, very very low infrastructure in many cases. Um, but I think the big thing is for the purpose of the zoning text amendment is our support for the reasons that we had already mentioned. Joe, just going back to what you were saying regarding um, making the distinction here in the zoning uh, regulation, I also think that it needs to be pointed out, I think even with the general public, that um, we're just including that into the zoning uh, regulation, but everything is by special permit, which gives the uh, depth and breadth uh, to the Planning and Zoning Commission to require anything that they want that they see fit or uh, depending on where that location is and stuff. So um, I love the idea or, or you know, applaud the idea that uh, this is getting added again under special permit, which again, just allows people to apply and then, and then we open up the discussion and um, put it requirements in where we see fit. So uh, it, it is by no means, um, uh, a blanket approval for, for anything. Uh, and I think they just need to keep reminding uh, folks about that because if you look at the one that was proposed there, um, you know, again, there was lots of language that was added in because of uh, where it was and, and so on and so forth. So um, again, if you, I think, you know, I'm not uh, suggesting PNC uh, won't go in this direction, but the idea that, um, as Joe had said, uh, I don't want to repeat it, but you know, that this is about one particular thing. It's, it's, uh, we need to keep it on task that it's about at changing to the regulation, um, just to be able to open up the conversation. And the public will still be involved when it's time for 
an application to come before the planning and zoning. So nobody's losing any of their uh, their voice in this pro process. It just, again, opens it up for discussion. And there's nothing wrong with discussion. So, Hank, um, so our bullet points then would be it's compliance um, with the POCD, uh, grant list diversity, um, that as an EDC, um, we find we find comfort in uh, the fact that this is everything is via every project stands on its own merit, merit and is subject to uh, um, special permit, right? Right. And um, I do think that you know, based on what I when I speak to uh, to Kevin, uh, based on his feedback on the um, you know the the sound regulations being so granular uh, and the 350 to 500 foot setback um, that may be some other uh, discussion point you know I don't know if we've, we based on that outcome um, you know I'll let you know whether you may want to consider saying something about that you know? okay um, Tim on the um, I'm just reading this quickly here on section uh, we're still on on six, I guess. Uh, six one two. I don't know. I, I don't. I I can't follow here, but um, under F, there is some uh, discussion about 100 foot uh, natural buffer, and then um, down under subsection two there. It talks about 750 feet. Oh, oh, that's from the uh, residential property. Never mind. Got it. I misunderstood that. I thought that I thought it was inconsistent between even between the 500. Yeah. So let me just read. So all sub all substations. So those are substations. Uh, oh, okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So the substations have to be 750 feet away. Got it. Got it. I, uh, I, I had no issue with. I mean, they can position the substation on this, you know, the far side of the building, away from residential, whatever. So, you know, right. substations being further away, I no issue with that. The 100 foot wide natural open space buffer, I think, is is good because it protects, again, the, um, uh, you know, anything that may be relatively close to residential. So. Um. No, I, I I apologize. I thought there was just some inconsistency, but I'm wrong. Apologize. This stuff can get confusing pretty easily. So. No. Is there any further discussion, gentlemen? I'm good. Okay. Um, well, I think we're good, Tim. I appreciate the uh, fact that we we're able to get together and have another discussion about that. Um, if we're all good, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah, if I just made one, one thing. So the um, the letter I'm going to send out to you is dated June 22 of 2021, and it was um, uh, just the EDC's position on on the data center proposal, which was the God space. But within that letter, it has some of the justifications that we've talked about. So. Um, Keep in mind that whatever I've sent you is, is more project, whatever I send you is more project specific as opposed to, uh, you know, a text chain, a text amendment. Yeah. All right. So. Got it. Got it. So we can, uh, we can uh, adjust accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Tim, uh, Tim, if I may, um, do we know if Monday night's meeting is going to be virtual or in person? Has anybody announced that yet? To the best of my knowledge, as of today, it's in person. Okay. Uh, in today's day and age, no. <laughs> hour by hour, you never know. So, yeah. as to the best of my knowledge, as of right now, it's in person. Great. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Have a good day, gentlemen. Guys, have a profitable day. Thank you.